Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and today we have come to the world famous RSPB Titchwell on the North Norfolk coast. Now, Titchwell is famous for its bird life, specifically its waders and its water loving birds. So we're going to take a walk from here down to the sea, all the way over there, pop in a couple of hides and see if we can't see what's about. Now I know that Spoonbill have been seen here recently and Bitten often show well. So fingers crossed, we're gonna catch a glimpse of one of these elusive, rare and amazing birds. The habitats at Titchwell include tidal mudflats, both freshwater and saltwater lagoons and extensive reed beds. We arrive late in the morning, so in order to see as much wildlife as possible, we hurry to the first hide. We've just come out of Island Mere Hide, which gives almost 360 degree views across a shallow freshwater lagoon, and there are so many birds in there. After a little while, something must have flew over and all the birds took up, and it was an amazing sight. Let's take a look. There were quite a few people in the Island Hide, so we took up a space to the right hand side with limited views across the water. This didn't matter though, as just out in front of us there were a few pairs of the UK's smallest ducks, teal. Teal are dabbling ducks that eat invertebrates and aquatic vegetation. This male demonstrated how they swish their beaks from left to right beneath the surface. This works to disturb the sediment and dislodge any invertebrate meals. Much further out across the lagoon was this group of around 500 golden plovers. These birds are in their winter colours and over the next couple of months they will molt to have black undersides, necks and faces. Here in front of them, moving from right to left is an avocet. These birds are famously the species that is on the RSPB logo. Until 1947, they hadn't bred in the UK for more than 100 years, but now, thanks to conservation and changes in how land is used, there are more than 1,500 pairs here. This small flock were mainly calm and resting until suddenly all of the birds on the lagoon took to the sky. I don't want to exaggerate and say there were thousands of birds flying overhead, but look at this. It was an awesome sight and easily compared to a disorganised starling murmuration. The birds soon settled so we decided to make a move. As we left the hide we passed by a small reed bed where I noticed two little birds swaying in the wind. This is a pair of bearded tits. Like many other species, and even people, bearded tits are sexually dimorphic. This means that the males and females look different to one another. This one is the male, he has a grey head and a black moustache. And here he is with his mate, she doesn't have the head markings and is much plainer overall. After watching the bearded tits for a little while and showing them to every person who walked by, we pushed on to the next hide. So we're coming to Parinda Hide at the moment, and this hide is made up of two parts, a freshwater section which we're in, and you can see here, a freshwater lagoon with absolutely thousands of birds out there, and then there's another side which is a saltwater lagoon, and we're going to take a look there in a minute. Anyway. Whilst we've been sat here, just down in front of me, I can see avocets, teal, widgeon, some people coming in, and loads of other stuff. Despite my embarrassment at being seen speaking to the camera, there really was a lot to see in the freshwater section of Perinda Hyde. Here behind these lapwings is an avocet finding a meal. Avocets feed on aquatic invertebrates and small fish which there must have been a lot of as it seemed to catch a morsel with every lunge. Just behind it you can see a predator fence. This was installed to protect avocet and other ground nesting birds from predators such as foxes and badgers.
Whilst he watched the Avocet, a pair of unmistakable shell duck landed on the lagoon. Shell duck are one of our largest species of duck and one of our most colourful too. Males and females can be separated by the size of the red lump at the base of their beaks. This is called a basal knob and is much larger and more noticeable in the male bird, which is on the left here. There are not many birds that are more recognisable on UK wetlands than the curlew. They are our largest wading bird and have a distinctive down curved bill that can measure up to 15 centimetres in length. You can see here how the bird uses this to probe into the sediment in search of aquatic worms and invertebrates. The beak has other uses too, it makes a perfect tool for cleaning those hard to reach places. With the time moving on, we hopped over to the saltwater side of Parinda Hyde. There were quite a few people in this side, but they were mainly focused on trying to identify some small brown birds amongst the grass. We couldn't see the small brown birds, but way off into the distance, we could see a scattered group of curlew. There must have been about 30 of them. We could also see this little lonesome grey plover in the distance. Notice how he takes one or two steps and then pauses, waits until he sees some movement and then walks over to snatch his prey. Grey plovers do not breed in the UK, they are a winter migrant and breed along the north coast of Russia, Canada, Alaska and on some Arctic islands. Closer into the hide was this red shank. At first he was feeding away, minding his own business, then suddenly he turned and lowered his body into a defensive posture. We thought he might have seen a predator, but no, it was another red shank and this one wanted the territory for himself. After a few head bops to stake his claim, the newcomer started feeding as if he'd been there all along. We decided to brave the wind, to leave the hide behind and head to the beach. From the pathway we spotted a large flock of bar-tailed gobwits way out on a small island. And here are several black-tailed gobwits with a couple of calmer red shanks. You'll just have to believe me when I say that despite appearances, both of these birds had two legs. As we carried on walking, several people had stopped and were looking at a group of ducks out on the water. Amongst some mallards were some appropriately named pintails. The male is at the back here and although both sexes have long pointed tail feathers, his are noticeably longer than hers. The breeding population of pintails in the UK is less than 50 pairs, so it's highly likely that these birds are European migrants. After watching the pintails for a few minutes, we finally made it to the beach. It was very windy and freezing cold. There were a few golden eye out on the water, but they were so far away and it was so windy, it made it pretty much impossible to get any good footage of them. We made a retreat and headed back inland, passing by a beautiful stone chat on top of an old war bunker. He didn't stay for long and neither did we. The sun was getting low so we headed towards the last hide of the day. We've just come across the Fen Hide and there's absolutely loads of wildlife here. The only problem is, 
it isn't outside, it's painted on the walls. Not great. <laughs> Fen Hyde is the closest hide to the car park, and alongside the painted walls, there were low benches and education equipment. I think this hide is probably used mainly for school visits, which is fine by me. Young people are the future of conservation, and the more that is done to encourage young people to take up an interest in wildlife, the better. Well, as you can see, we're no longer RSPB Titchwell, but what an amazing day that was. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, maybe you should consider subscribing to the channel and also checking out some of the other British wildlife videos that you will find there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.